Welcome to lecture 6.6, .6, boundary value problems. You can think of boundary value problems as being like initial value problems, but for functions of, po of position rather than functions of time. So let's, instead of defining these things, let's just give examples. So if y of t is a function of time, then here's an example initial value problem. This might be harmonic motion as a function of time. And this says that at initially the position is 1 and the rate of change is 0. So a boundary value problem is going to be like this. Well, if y is a function of position, so y might be the, like the temperature of, so let's just go down here. So maybe, maybe y is the temperature of a, of a rod. And then something like this will be a boundary value problem. y of 0 equals 0. That means the temperature is fixed at 0 for all, um, for all time. And y of pi is equal to 0. So that means the temperature here is fixed for all position. And so then the question is, what is the temperature in between? So, so maybe the, so the solution, I don't know, might be something like this. Um, and the only restrictions are that the temperature is fixed at the endpoints. Now, this may not actually solve this. I don't know. I just wrote down a sample equation. But that's, that's what a boundary value problem is. We have to, once you fix the temperature of the boundaries, that, that determines, maybe not uniquely, the temperature of the inside of the rod. So the theory of initial value problems, so we call them IVPs, when I say the theory, the existence and uniqueness of solutions is well understood. It's beautiful. We know that this has a two-parameter family of solutions, and we know um, that when we determine, when we pick um, two initial values, then that determines a unique solution. That always happens. For boundary value problems, it's less clear. It's not always the case that picking two values like this is going to give you a unique solution. It might give you no solutions. It might give you infinitely many solutions or something in between. And we'll see examples of all of this fairly shortly. So here is a good example about how unpredictable the solutions to boundary value problems can be. So here's, here are three boundary value problems, or BVPs, and they are very similar. They only differ on the, on the right boundary. So let's solve, solve the general solution to this first, because it's the same for all of them. So y of x equals c1 cosine of x plus c2 sine of x, right? And all of these have the same left boundary condition. So we can, right away, I can say that y of 0, plug in 0, and I get c1 times 1 plus 0. So c1 equals 0. So right away, for all of these, we can say y of x equals c2 sine of x. This is our, this is, I don't want to say our general solution, this is, this is our solution to uh, this equation with this boundary condition. Now let's do, let's use the, the second boundary condition one by one. So the first one we have y of pi is zero. So y of pi equals c2 sine of pi, and that's sine of pi is zero. So that's going to be 0, because remember this, this is equal to 0, and this, this is 0 um, for all c2. So in other words, this, this equation is satisfied regardless as to what c2 is. So that means that the, that the solution to this boundary value problem is y of x equals c2 sine of x. There we go. Any C2 works. So let's do the next one. Um, so y, here we have y of pi over 2 is 0. So y of pi over 2 equals C2 times sine of pi over 2 equals 0. Now sine of pi over 2 equals 1. So that means that C2 better be equal to 0. So c2 equals 0. So our solution is y, y of x equals 0. There is only one solution. 
here we have an infinite family of solutions. Now let's do the last one. Let's say, suppose we have this condition, y of pi equals 1. So y of pi equals c2 times sine of pi equals 1. Well, this, this is equal to 0, so we have c2 times 0 equals 1. So this means we have no solution. So three boundary value problems, all very similar. One of them has infinitely many solutions, one of them has a unique solution, and one of them has no solutions. This is a different kettle of fish than initial value problems. Okay, so the remainder of this lecture, we will do three examples, and all of them will be this differential equation um, and different boundary co uh, conditions. And the reason why I'm doing these now is because this will come up all the time in the next series of lectures, this, section 7, on partial differential equations, or PDEs. So these are, you can think of them as multivariate differential equations for functions that we have of position x and time t. And solving them is quite messy, but it turns out that probably at least half of the messiness comes from this boundary value problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract that out and, and solve that in this lecture. And then it'll make um, the messiness of PDE seem a lot simpler because um, there'll be fewer steps. Okay, so, so what we have here is, is we have this differential equation. Um, and lambda is some constant. We don't know if it's positive. We don't know if it's negative. We just know that we want to find all possible solutions to this equation for some constant given this. So... Um, the general solution is going to vary widely as to whether this constant is positive or negative or zero. So let's handle these cases separately. So case, so case one is when lambda equals zero. So in that case, we have y double prime equals zero, which means that y of x equals, well, what functions have their second derivative zero? Linear functions. So equals like a x plus b. And we also have y of 0 is 0 and y of pi of 0. So this is a linear function that goes through this point and it goes through that point. Obviously, there's only one solution. So we get that y of x equals 0. OK, so um, in this case, we have only the 0 solution. So case, case two, suppose y is positive, or not y, lambda is positive. So let's, let's call it omega squared, because we know that has to be a positive number. So in this case, now we have y double prime equals omega squared y, and we know that the general solution is y of x equals c1 e to the omega x plus c2 e to the negative omega x, right? And now, it, it's not hard. I'll leave it as an exercise to you um, that if, if you plug in these two initial values, so let's see. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it to you. If, if I plug in these two, I call them initial values. Again, boundary values. If I plug these into here, um, it's not hard to see that c1 and c2 will be 0. It's actually not quite so obvious. I mean, let's see, when you plug in 0, you get c1 plus c2 equals 0. And then you plug in pi, and you get c1 times e to the pi, omega pi plus c2 times e to the negative omega pi equals 0. And a little bit of math will show you that that system of equations only has the 0 solution. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. This is a good way to introduce um, hyperbolic um, sines and cosines. So recall um, that cosine of x equals e to the i x plus e to the minus i x over 2. And so there, there's a similar function, which is called cosh. Cosh of x equals e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, now let's make that a little more legible. e to the x plus e to the minus x. So it's similar to cosh. I mean, it's easy to see that 
cosh of i x is equal to cosine. And then there's, of course, sine of x equals e to the i x minus e to the minus i x over 2, over 2 i. And there's a related function, cinch of x equals e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. There's no i in here. So you've probably seen these ever since middle school or high school on your calculator. These buttons are on most TI, I don't know what they are now, 92 or higher. You've probably wondered what they are. Well, here's what they are. Um, so Kosh, let's say a few things about these. Kosh looks is, it's not a parabola, but it looks like a parabola a little bit, something like that. And Cinch, it's not a, a um, I actually don't know if, if these things cross or not. Uh, um, cinch looks like a like a uh, odd degree polynomial, but it's not. So, so um, what else can I say about these? So the derivative of, of cosh and cinch or cosine and sine, you know those. You know, the derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. These things are even easier. The derivative of cosine is sine, and the derivative of sine or, sorry the derivative of cosh is cinch, and the derivative of cinch is cosh. Really simple. Um, but also, um, cosh of, these things have a lot of similar properties as this. One of them is that cosh of 0 is equal to 1, and cinch of 0 is equal to 0. So this is a very good time, I think, to introduce these things. And a good rule of thumb is that for boundary value problems, it's usually easier to work with cinches and coshes rather than exponentials. So given that, I'm going to instead write the general solution to this uh, equation as C1. Um, actually, let me not say C1. Let me call it A. A cosh of um, omega x plus B cinch of omega x. You may, be, you may be saying, what the heck am I doing? Well, if the derivative of cosh is cinch, then the second derivative, if I take two derivatives of cosh of omega x, then I get the same thing back, but an omega squared pulls out. So notice that the derivative, so or the derivative of cosh of omega x is just by the chain rule, omega of cinch omega x. So obviously these exponentials solve this differential equation, but also cosh and cinch solve this general solve this differential equation. And um, it's not hard to see how you can get cosh by choosing c1 and c2 correctly. Um, and same with cinch. If, if you pick the correct values of c1 and c2, you can get you can go from these functions to these functions, and vice versa. Okay, so so given this, um, so why am I doing this? I, I claim it's easier. So let's use plug in these boundary values. So y of zero equals a. So when you're plugging in these values, you can almost pretend that they are sin, uh, sines and cosines. So y of 0 equals a times 1 plus b times, times 0. So y of 0 equals a, which is, oops, which is 0. Um, and so that means that we can get rid of this term. And that's, that says that y of, of, so y of x is b cinch. omega x. And now let's plug in our second boundary value, y of pi equals 0. So y of pi equals b cinch of omega pi equals 0. Now you don't have to know much about cinch, but it is. it looks like this. The only time cinch is 0 is at 0. So b, if we have b times cinch of a positive number being 0, that can only happen if b is 0. So right away we say that b equals 0. And so now we, so now we have this is 0 as well. So 
y of x equals 0. So thus far, for lambda that's 0 or lambda that's positive, we only have the 0 solution. So let's, let's do the third case. So case 3 is that lambda is negative, in which case I want to call it negative omega squared, which is less than 0. So y double prime equals negative omega squared times y. Now I'm going to write my solutions using sines and cosines equals a cosine of omega x plus b sine of omega x. Okay, now let's, let's, let's plug in our, our boundary conditions. So y of 0 equals, again, I'm plugging in 0, a times 1 plus b times 0. So y of 0 equals a, which is 0. So right away we can cross off that. And that means that y of x is really just b sine of omega x. <clears throat> okay, so let's use our second condition. So y of pi equals b sine of omega pi, which is 0. So obviously, b could be equal to 0. That's, that's a possibility, which means the whole function is 0. But, you know, that, that's, that's nothing new. We've already determined that y equals 0 is a solution to this equation. So let's, um, and actually, you know, that's not going to work um, because, oh, yeah, it does, sure. That's a solution, but it's a boring one. Okay, so let's, let's go over here. And let's, let's see what sine looks like. So sine is, is this function, right? And it is, I guess I can extend it over here as well. And it has roots at pi, 2 pi, 3, at integer multiples of pi, right? So b could be equal to 0, but, or sine could be equal to 0. And when is sine equal to 0? So, so this is equal to 0 when, when is that equal to 0? It's when this is an integer multiple of pi. So when omega pi equals n times pi, which is the same thing as saying omega equals n. So now we have determined a whole family of solutions. So we have a solution when omega is equal to n. So let me, let me box that because that is important. So we have a solution y, I'm going to call it yn of x equals bn sine of nx. So to summarize, find all solutions to the following boundary value problem. Well, all solutions, that happens when lambda equals negative n squared for um, n equals 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm keeping 0 because we know that, well, 0 works as well. And so all solutions, we, so we solve lambda, that's negative n squared, and we know that um, we have a solution for, for that particular lambda. We have a solution, which is bn sine of nx. So this is our solution to this boundary value problem. Okay, so here's our second boundary value problem. It's the same differential equation and um, different boundary conditions, but we know how big of a deal that could make. So let's, let's do the same thing we did before. Case one is when lambda equals zero. So we have y double prime equals zero which means that y of x equals ax plus b. So with these boundary conditions, it's not hard to show that, it's not hard to reduce these things. Um, I'll let you do the math as an exercise, but I'll give you a, a picture proof of this. So um, this means we have a straight line, so like this or this or something like this, and this means that the derivative of that line better be zero at both 0 and pi, and fortunately those things 
can both happen because the line can be straight. So in this case, we have um, y. So we have a solution y y naught of x um, equals. Let's see, what do I want to call this? Let me just call that solution a naught. So there, there is a solution. Any constant solution. Okay. So so case two is when lambda is positive. So let's say it's omega squared. In this case, we have y double prime equals omega squared y. And in boundary value problems, it's usually easier to use cinches and cautious. So let's do that. So y of x, instead of using exponentials, I'm going to write this as a cosh of omega x plus b cinch of omega x. So let's, let's plug in these things. So we have to take the derivative, so y prime of x equals a omega times cinch of, of omega x plus b omega times cosh of omega x. So remember the derivative of cinch, of cinch is cosh and vice versa, and we don't switch signs, and uh, we got to pull out omega because of the chain rule. Okay, so let's plug in zero. So y prime of zero, oops, I didn't mean to do that second parenthesis. So y prime of zero equals, um, so a times omega times zero plus b times omega times one, and that equals zero. So Omega is positive, and so that means that b has to be equal to zero. So b equals zero. And now let's plug in this the second one. So, so if b is zero, that means that I'm not going to rewrite this. I'm just going to cross that out. That's gone. So now y prime of, of pi, we're only plugging into this term, equals a times omega times cinch of omega pi, which is equal to zero. And recall that, remember, remember that cinch I said looks like a, cinch looks like this. So the only time it's zero is at zero. So this is non-zero. This is cinch of something positive. That is non-zero, because that's positive. So a better be zero. So that means that a equals zero. So we ha only have our solution we only have the trivial solution y, oops, not y of 0, y of x equals 0. So we don't have any new solutions in this case. I mean, we had the 0 solution up here as well. That's one special case. So let's do case 3. Case 3 is lambda is negative omega squared, which is less than 0. So now we have y double prime equals negative omega squared y. So we have y of x equals um, a cosine of omega x plus b sine of omega x. And let's take the derivative because we're going to be plugging into the derivative. So y prime of x equals a omega sine of omega x, and I need to put a negative sign there, plus b omega cosine of omega x. Okay, now let's, let's plug in, um, plug in these guys, 0 and pi. So y of, y prime of 0 equals, so plugging in 0 into here, we get, that whole term goes away because we have sine of 0. And so we have b omega times 1. So, um, so y prime of 0 is b times omega, which is 0. And so that tells me that b equals 0. So now I'm going to just cross out that, and I'm going to cross out that. Those are gone. And now if we have y prime of pi equals negative a times omega times sine 
of omega pi, which is zero, and as before, we're gonna assume that A is non-zero, otherwise we just get the same old zero solution that we got up here. I should probably actually box that. Um, we know omega is non-zero, that's a negative number, and so that means sine of omega pi equals zero. And recall, that only happens so sine of something equals zero when we're at an integer multiples of pi. And so th this means that omega pi equals some integer multiple of pi, which means that omega equals n. So now we have a solution for each n. So, so we've determined now that lambda, so actually let's, let me erase that. So lambda can be any negative n squared, as before. And then we have a solution for that particular n. We have a solution of the form. Uh, let's see, it, it was, here it was, or here it is. So it's going to be, let's call it a n cosine of n x. So this is our solution. So now putting this together, find all solutions. So we, so we have a, so now as before, lambda can be any negative n squared for n equals zero, one, two, et cetera. And then we have lambda n, or not, I'm sorry, not lambda n, we, we want y n, y n of so we have a solution of the form, I'm going to call it a n cosine of n x. And I'm going to leave it like this because when n equals zero, we have a constant solution and that's consistent with what we have here. So let's, let's compare and contrast. For this example, we had, um, we have solutions that are cosines and for the previous example, recall when we had y double prime equals lambda y with y of zero equals zero, and y of pi equals zero. Then we had, in that case, we had y n of x equals b n sine of n x. Let me graph this for you so you can sort of see the, the difference. So one way this is gonna come up in, in modeling is picture that y represents the temperature of a bar of length pi. So we, we have a bar from zero to pi. So, so here's our bar. And, and in the first example, um, from the previous um, slide, y of zero equals zero, y of pi equals zero. That means the temperature of the bar at the endpoints is fixed. And we're assuming that the bar is insulated. So temperature or heat doesn't escape this way. It only goes back and forth. But the endpoints are fixed at zero degrees. And, and, uh, so why, um, so what solutions are zero at, or what solutions satisfy this equation and go through these two points? Well, the um, sine waves do. So here's sine of x, here's sine of 2x, here's sine of 3x, um, here's, here's a sine wave, sine waves. Things of the four, sine of nx satisfy this differential equation, or this, this boundary value problem. Now this boundary value problem, um, here's, here's what this might model. So imagine a bar of length pi, and y is the temperature, but now we, these boundary conditions mean that the ch temperature does not change at the endpoints. So that means that our function is, is flat at the endpoints. So for example, cosine, see that's the uh, slope of the tangent line is zero at the endpoints. So a cosine wave might do that. Here's cosine of, here's cosine of two x. So that's, this is cosine of x, this is cosine of two x. Well, scale that is, I don't, I'm not labeling my, my y-axis. Um, here's cosine of three x, any, any sort of cosine wave, any sort of cosine of nx is gonna satisfy this condition. It's gonna be flat at zero and pi, and it's gonna satisfy this equation. Whereas here, 
these equate these functions are not flat here, but they are fixed at zero. So if we fix the endpoints at zero, we get sine waves, and we fix the endpoint, the rate of change of the endpoints at zero, which is this boundary value problem, we get cosine waves. Okay, so here's our last example, and the, this is called a boundary value problem with mixed conditions because we have at one endpoint, um, the temperature is zero, if, you, if you're thinking of y of x as the temperature of a bar, and the other endpoint, um, the rate of change is zero. So let me, let me actually sketch this. So suppose we have a bar of length pi, and, and I might actually show you what the solutions are before we solve it, uh, just to get some intuition. So, so we're looking for all functions uh, that satisfy this equation, and not surprisingly, we're going to get only sines and cosines. So sine and cosine waves that, that are zero at zero, so that means they go through this point, and then they are flat at here, this point. So, so that might mean that they might be up here, they might be down here. So you might have something like, like this. This is a sine wave. You might have something like, like, like this. Well, I didn't draw that very well. Let me see if I can fix that. Yeah, so you might have something like, like this. Again, that, that's flat there. You might have something like this, that, um, et cetera. So these things are sine waves, but they have different period. The period is twice as long as, as, the, one in the, as the ones in the previous example. For example, like it, if I were to extend this, this would come down at 2 pi. So this is not sine of x, this is sine of x over 2. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. We, we suspect that, that solutions here are going to be sine waves, but the period is going to be twice as long. So as before, let's, let's do our two cases. Case 1, lambda is 0. So that means we get y double prime is 0. So we get y of x equals ax plus b. So we have straight lines that... Um, so we have straight lines that go through the, or I didn't need to redraw, I didn't need to draw that, I'll just do it up here. Straight lines that go through the origin, y of 0, 0, and they are flat. Okay, so just the zero solution. I encourage you to um, actually plug these things in algebraically and verify that a and b have to be zero. It's a good exercise. Here's case two. So lambda is... Um, Omega squared, which is positive. So we will say that these solutions are A cosh of omega x plus B cinch of omega x. I should probably write down in this case, the equation is actually Y double prime equals omega squared Y. So in this case, let's plug in Y of zero and we get A times cosh of zero, which is just a, which is 0. So we get that this whole term is 0. So let's take the derivative y prime of x, and again we're only going to take the derivative of this because that term is 0. y prime of x is b omega cosh of omega. Aren't these cinch and coshes nice because we don't have to worry about the, the sign s-i-g-n of this? Okay, so let's plug in C, pi. So now we have y prime of pi equals b omega um, cosh of omega times pi is 0. And we know that b is non-zero. Well, if b is 0, we get the familiar 0 solution, which we already have. So we can assume b is not 0, omega is not 0, and cosh is non-zero because this is positive. So that means that this is zero, so we get that b is zero, and we have only the zero solution here. So for case three, now we have lambda is omega squared, negative omega squared, which is negative. So we have um, solutions of sines and cosines. So a cosine of omega x plus b times sine of omega x. And let's plug in our, our boundary values. So 
So y of 0 equals a, which is 0. So our cosine term goes away. That's what we expected. And all of these things up here are sine waves. And so let's take the derivative. y prime of x equals b times omega times cosine of omega um, x. So y prime of pi equals b omega times cosine of omega pi, which is 0. So again, b is not 0. You can assume omega is not 0. And so when is cosine 0? So let's, let's recall this. So co here's the unit circle. Cosine is 0 when we are here or when we're here. So this is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so forth. So this happens when, so cosine of omega pi is 0. That, that means that that thing, omega pi, better be n plus 1 half times pi. So now we have, now we have our solution. So let's see. So I should say omega equals n plus 1 half. So now lambda is negative omega squared. So it's negative n plus 1 half squared. So negative n plus 1 half squared. And so we have a solution. So for each n, we have a solution of the form where were we? Um, B, N. So let's see. So our solution is, there it is. So B, B, N, sine of omega, sine of N plus 1 half times X. So this is the solution to our boundary value problem. And you can see that this thing up here, this, this is sine of n over 2, something like this is going to be, down below is going to be sine of 3, sorry, n, um, I should say x over 2, not n over 2, sine of 3x over 2 uh, times, times some, obviously, not the same scaling constant, so that, let's say this is like 2 sine of x over 2, this might be sine of 3x over 2, we have sine of 5x over 2, and things like that. And, you know, I should say now that um, I've been saying n is a is positive integer. I've been ignoring the fact that n could be negative. And, of course, n can be negative. But I claim we don't actually get any other solutions if we have that. So if, if we allow n to be negative, then, then we have sine of negative this times x. And, and the negative sign just pulls out. So that just pulls out and gets absorbed in the constant. So we, we only get uh, truly distinct solutions when we have... Um, n being, so here I'm going to assume n is 0, 1, 2, or so forth. Okay, so that, that was the third um, boundary, value, boundary value problem that we've seen. Um, there's, there's a fourth one of this ilk, which I'm going to have you do for homework, I think a, work, a worksheet. And I, I strongly recommend you to do it right after this lecture. It's, it's fantastic practice. It's the, it's the best thing best way to practice is after you see this. So solve this boundary value problem. y prime of 0 equals 0, and y of pi equals 0. And again, you can probably guess what the solutions are in advance. And before you even do this, you can look at, so this means we're looking for, let's draw my our pi here. So we're looking for, it's going to be sine and cosine waves that now they they, I'll think of this as the temperature of a bar, and the bar is 0 at pi, and it's flat at 0. So it's, so it's either going to look like, they might look at functions like this, or functions like that, things like this. And so you can guess, yep, cosine waves, and it's going to be have a different period as well. So I encourage you to do this right after watching this lecture. It's good practice.